Shalom, shalom, and welcome to Kingdom Treasures, the teaching ministry of Messianic teacher Rav Angus Marichaud, the founder of Shekinah Restoration Messianic Fellowship. Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world, says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid, then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Matthew 13, 44 We believe that Yeshua proclaimed, prioritized, and personified the powerful and in-breaking reign of the kingdom of the God of Israel, first to the lost sheep of the family of Israel, then to all nations. The Hebraic perspective is a golden key that unlocks the treasures of Holy Scripture. May you be enriched and equipped through kingdom treasures. And now, with today's teaching, here is Rav Angus Marichaud. Blessed be God, Most High. Blessed is he, and he is blessed. We bless you in the powerful name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of the living God. The blessing of Adonai be upon you. We bless you in the name of Elohim. We are gathered again under his power, in his name. We are gathered to hear wonderful words of life. Father in heaven, glorify your Son. O God, who abides and lives in me, speak to your children and feed us with eternal words of life. Quicken hearers, O oh God, to hear your word and to respond. We bless you for the opportunity to sit and be taught and to be transformed by the spirit of liberty who transform us and conform us to the image of the Messiah. Speak to us from the mount. Hashem Yeshua. Amen. Be Amen. Baruch Hashem. Blessed is he and he is blessed. As we continue to proclaim the kingdom of Elohim, we look into his words of life and we thank Elohim for the precious opportunity that he has given to us to hear words of life. Today, I would like to share with us on the message, Torah from the Mount. Torah from the Mount. We are uh, treating with the passage in, in Matthew, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm going to speak to us by God's grace on Torah from the Mount. So go with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah 51. Torah from the Mount, I'm going to pick it up in Isaiah 51. In Isaiah 51, from verse 4, the prophet records this word for us. Isaiah 51, verse 4. He says, pay attention to me. This is God speaking through the prophet. He's saying, pay attention to me, O my people. So God is speaking through the prophet. And give air to me, O my nation. For a Torah will go forth from me. You see that phrase? A Torah will go forth from me. So we're speaking on... Torah from the mount. Torah going forth from the mount. And I will set my justice for a light of the peoples. Verse 5. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. And my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands will wait for me. And for my arm they will wait expectantly. So when we look at that passage, God is prophesying that when my son comes on earth, a Torah will go forth from him. Now, this is wonderful for us to grasp because this Torah goes forth from him. Notice what the prophet says. A Torah will go forth from me. So it's speaking about uh, uh, God saying me and my. It is coming forth from him. It is the, a window. It is a, 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 a wheel within the wheel. This is the spirit, the inner dimensions of the Torah. We have the understanding of the Torah given through Moses. And here we have one greater than Moses, uh, the living Moses, as it were. And he's speaking a Torah that goes forth from him. So consider this, brethren, because this Torah that is going forth from is going to reach into real time and space. This message is going to go forth from the Messiah. This is not just a religious lofty uh, 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 expression but this is a dynamic living encounter with the living messiah you're, you're getting a torah from him this is a, 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 a god's word it's a call to respond 
in concrete and specific ways. Notice the me and my. He's bringing us into relationship. He has reconciled us. He's bringing us into relationship. He said, I'm going to reveal to you the inner dimensions of the Torah. A Torah will go forth from me. So yes, Yeshua is seated on the mount, but this is a Torah going forth from the mount. It is, it, he's bringing us into the Father's presence. A Torah will go forth from me and my righteousness, my salvation. And he said the coastlands, the nations are waiting for that. So the people, the nations of the world, Israel and the nations of the world, they're waiting for that Torah that comes forth from him. And keep stressing that because there's a Torah that could go forth from Moses and there's a Torah that could go forth from the inner Moses. Receive and understand what God is saying to us. So this is a Torah going forth from him. All right? Go with me to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 25. This week we are in a Torah portion. That is a double portion. And I want you to look at Leviticus 25 verse 1. Leviticus 25 verse 1. Look again. Verse 1. It says, Adonai then spoke to, Mo uh, then spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, saying, Adonai spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, saying, Notice the Torah from the mount. Notice it is God speaking to Moses. So the Torah is going forth from God. It's going to come through Moses, and it's at Mount Sinai. So Mount Sinai is linked with Mount, 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 Mount Zion, as it were, where the Torah will go forth. And the Sermon on the Mount. I just want us to see that concept of going forth. And when you look at Leviticus 25, we get the concept of, the, of liberty, of, 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 of jubilee. So look with me at verse 10. You shall thus consecrate the 50th year and proclaim a release from the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a yovel, a jubilee for you. And each of you shall return to his own property. And each of you shall return to his family. So this Torah that is coming forth from Sinai is going to bring about a, a, a physical liberty, but there is a Torah that is going forth from him that will bring about a spiritual liberty. So when we consider that, we are beginning to understand what God is saying, all right? There's a Torah that is coming forth from him. Go also with me to Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 3. Well, that's the other passage that we're going to be considering. Leviticus 26 verse 3, we have here. If you walk in my statutes, all right, and keep my commandment so as to carry them out. So if you walk habitually, this is your habit, you're walking in God's statutes, all right, and, and you're keeping his commandments to carry them out. And so there is a liberty that God is bringing to us. I want you to make that, that point again and again. Go with me to the book of Tehillim, that's Psalm 119, verse uh, 45. Psalm 119, verse 45. I want you to see these thoughts and, and picture Messiah, Moses, proclaim to Israel liberty, uh, 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 the Yovel, Jubilee, after every 50 years. When the Messiah came and he's in that synagogue in, in Capernaum, he starts his ministry, said he's proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. He's proclaiming liberty. He's proclaiming release. He's proclaiming a Torah that goes from him that will bring about release to all. And that's what we are longing and yearning for. So look with me, Psalm 119, verse 45. David says, I will walk at liberty. Watch this. I, David, will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Now take a note of that. I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. So in seeking the precepts and walking in the precepts, we walk in what? Liberty. Now, again, consider that because that is powerful to consider. All right? God is giving us liberty. And in obedience, we enter into liberty. Or well, forward with me to the book of James, the brother of our master, the book of James, Yaakov. Because his name was really Yaakov. James just came about because King James wanted his name in the Bible when he was uh, publishing the King James Bible. All right. It's really Yaakov. All right. So look with me to, to James, the brother of our master, Yaakov, Jacob. All right. And we're going to pick it up uh, uh, from verse 19. 
So James 1 verse 19, let's read. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. The anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Even if you are right, you are wrong if you are operating in anger. Because the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So we could be right, but wrong. Because our spirit is wrong. Or we could be sincere, but sincerely wrong. As I say, we're wrong like an O because we are not of the spirit of the Messiah. That spirit of the Messiah is not going forth from us. All right? Verse 21. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and, and all that remains of wickedness in humility, notice the opposite, receive the word that's the living Torah implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. But if everyone and anyone's a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. What's the use of looking into the mirror? The mirror tells us our image, but we don't make the adjustments that we see. We forget. We are forgetful error. All right. Verse 25. But one who looks intently intently at the perfect torah the torah of liberty notice not the torah of legalism and bondage and done away the torah of liberty i will walk at liberty because i seek your precepts to so look into the torah of liberty and abides present continuous by it or rather by him not having become a forgetful hearer but an effectual doer this man, this man will be blessed in what he does, not in what he says or what he confesses, but the Spirit of God empowering you to be an effectual doer. That is what brings the liberty. Who the Son says free is free indeed, because it is the Son of God abiding in us, transforming us, because the opposite of liberty is what? Slavery, bondage, legalism. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, and yet does not bridle his tongue. That's been affect you as doing or you think, but you're not actually doing, bridling the tongue, but deceives his own heart. That man's religion is what? Worthless. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of God who sees the heart. And Father, is this, to actually do this. That when I think I would go and visit this person. That's wonderful that you think, but this thinking must lead to a doing. To visit the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the word. That is what God is saying to us. All right. So I want you to see the liberty aspect. Go across with me to James chapter 2 also and pick it up from verse 12 and verse 13. James 2 from verse 12. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the Torah of liberty. Notice how we are to be judged by the Torah of liberty. For judge will be merciless the one who has shown no mercy because the Torah, the inner Torah tells us blessed as the merciful for they shall obtain mercy mercy triumphs over judgment what is the weightier matter of the Torah? Mercy and so we look at it and I'm trying to bring home that concept again and again to us about Torah and liberty now go with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So I want to bring that concept into our thinking. Torah. I'm notice I'm using the word Torah. I'm going to explain that a little more. And liberty. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we have this concept. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, now Moses speaks about the five books of the Bible, first five books. A veil lies over their heart. So you're reading the Torah, but there's a veil over your heart, which prevents you from seeing the real intent, the wheel within the wheel, the inner dimension. The Torah goes forth from me. You're unable to see it because all you're seeing is the external dimension of the Torah. But you're unable to see the deep internal dimension of the Torah. Verse 16. 
But whoever, what, whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, this is alluding to the time when Moshe would go into the presence of God. Remember when he went to the presence of God and he came out, his face was shining. He didn't know that his face was shining. And he went back into the presence of God. He removed the veil. So whenever Moses, right, turns to back to Adonai, the veil is taken away because he doesn't need to have a veil when he's talking to God. So we continue on. Now the Lord, Hashem, Adonai, is the spirit. And where the spirit of Adonai is, there is liberty. There is freedom for God and Moshe to interact and speak. There's no veil. There's no hindrance. There's no impediment. There is a liberty. There is a freedom. Access both ways. There's liberty. Liberty. Torah. Liberty. Moshe is like the embodiment of the Torah. And God is saying there is liberty. Now watch it on this. But we all. With unveiled face, that's how we should be speaking now. Beholding as in a mirror, which we don't forget, all right? The glory of Adonai, just as Moshe's face was shining with the glory of God, are being transformed. Notice it's a process into the same age from glory to glory. Glory to glory. The glory of the old covenant and the glory of the new covenant. The old covenant is the Torah written upon hearts of stone. The new covenant is the glory written, the Torah written upon hearts of flesh. If you go back with me, you will see verse 8, same chapter. How will the ministry of the Spirit fail to, even, uh, to be even more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, that's the Torah that was given externally, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. Are you seeing this? The ministry of condemnation. The ministry that came through Moshe brought glory. But how much more the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. And so to go from glory to glory is to go from the, the, the ministry, the Torah, as it were, given by Moses, to deeper, to understand the Torah given by the inner Moses. I want us to see that. We are not debunking or removing Moshe. We are saying if Moshe came with glory, much more when Messiah is speaking through Moses, it's far much more glorious. It's a matter of comparison. You put Moses against Yeshua, it's like saying the brightest sun in the galaxy and Yeshua. Yeshua shone forth to, to the apostle Paul at midday and he said, a light shine brighter than noonday because anything compared to the Messiah is like chalk and cheese. You can't, I mean, come on, there's no comparison. But still, it doesn't mean that the sun is insignificant. But it just means that the Messiah has an a, a, a uncreated glory. It's a different realm. It, it, it is beyond our comprehension. It's God speaking to us. And that's what he's saying. When you and I receive the liberty of the spirit, we are now liberated to be who we are called to be and live a life of freedom because the inner Torah, Oh my God, the living Torah, the Torah of liberty abides in us. That's not an it, that's a him. Oh my God, we're continuing on and we're seeing this. So Torah brought freedom to the world. Torah brought freedom to the world. Go with me to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. I wanted to, to, to just give us this little insight. Romans chapter 9 verse 4, speaking about the Jewish people today. Notice what he said, Romans 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites? Not were. There's no replacement theology here. Not who were Israelites, but who are. Present continuous. Are Israelites. To whom belongs present the adoption of sons. Yes, Israel is my firstborn. And the glory, the Shekinah, that came upon Mount Sinai, and that came upon the tabernacle, and came upon the temple, and came upon Yeshua. We beheld his glory, the glory, and the covenants. Oh, my God. All those covenants, the covenant of Adam, the covenant of Noah, the covenant of Abraham, right? The, the, the Davidic covenant, the new covenant, all the covenants, plural, all right? The covenants. And watch this, the giving of the law. Your word says law, but I say Torah. I'm going to explain that some more. But notice the giving of the law. And the temple service and the promises, whose are present continuous, the fathers, and from whom is the Messiah, according to the flesh, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. That settles it. You know, you know, we, we have this saying that Israel is the apple of God's eye. 
The word apple should be understood not just uh, 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 as a, 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 a fruit, but the apple really means uh, the pupil. Israel is the pupil of God's eye. And what he's communicating to us is this. If you poke Israel, you're like poking God in his eye. If you poke God in his eye, he will not stand still and let you poke him in the eye. All right? And he's also telling us, since Israel is my pupil, it means how the world treats Israel is how God sees how you're treating me. So the pupil of uh, Israel being the pupil of God's eye, he said he's seeing the world through Israel. And if you want to look into God's eye, you look into Israel. Because there still remains the promise, the covenant, and the glory. Maybe faded, but look closer, look deeper. You will see the Shekinah is still there. They're still blessing the nation because they still are. Not, not replacement. Oh my God. Or we can see that Israel is dear to God, but Israel is the pupil of God's eye. May we look into God's eye. And as we look, we will see his heart and his mind for a people and for all mankind. All right? So we keep, I want to mention this given of the Torah because I want us to get this concept. We could think about the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. But notice God says the giving of the Torah, present continuous, which means, beloved, the Torah is still going forth from Mount Sinai. There is a voice that is still speaking if you and I could hear. He's still giving the Torah. And every time you and I open the Bible, we should see ourselves as standing at the foot of Mount Sinai again, receiving the Torah. He's given and we are receiving and we are being changed because we are receiving the living Torah into our hearts and minds. So the Torah is not past tense. The Torah that he gave is the giving of the Torah. And every time you and I study, it's like if we have prepared ourselves to come into the presence of God and God is going to speak to us, would we be receiving, all right? Consider the concept of Moshe in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis, no, no, not, not Moshe, sorry, Abraham. In Genesis 22, a passage that we read every day, the Akeda, in verse 14, we have this text. And Abraham called the name of the place uh, uh, the Lord will provide. And many go away to talking about Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, oh my God. Ah, Baruch Hashem, Father, help. So it is Adonai Yireh. There's no J in Hebrew. Hashem Yireh or Adonai Yireh. All right? Hold on Jehovah for a while. I will come back to that. But it says Adonai will provide. And so we go away thinking, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But the Hebrew is, God will see to it. God will look out into his interests. So to provide it is a secondary meaning. What God is saying, he will see to it. In other words, when we ascend Mount Moriah, we will get God's perspective and see things as he sees. God will see to it. God will give us the perspective of his lamb that we need to have. Rather than just, God, I have no money to, to pay my rent. You are my Jehovah Jireh. She's not talking about that. He said, see things from my perspective. If you seek first my kingdom and you see that, then I will add to you your rent. I know what you have need of, but you need to see my, from my perspective. Come up to the monk. Come up higher and seek my kingdom and my righteousness and everything will be added to you. It has to do with us understanding that God is still speaking to us. So it's not law and bondage and legalism and dead works. I want us to see that. I want us to, to see Peter stepped out of the boat to go to Messiah. Too many of God's precious children have a wrong concept of the first five books of the Bible as law, as bondage, as legalism and dead works. And I'm here to debunk, refute challenge, upset that, uproot that teaching because it's a dishonoring root that the father never sowed. In all the, 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 the storms, Peter said, Lord, if that is you, bid me to come to you. And the master said to him, fear not. You know, it is I. I want this, this, us to see that in your thinking, you may think it is legalism. It is bondage. It is done away. I'm saying to you by the spirit of the living God, it is I. When you look into the it, you will see the I. And you will see it is a living Torah abiding and speaking 
through the words of the Torah. It is I. Go past all the teachings of, of, of legalism and bondage done away. That's a trick of the enemy to prevent you from encountering the living Messiah. She shuts you off from that. He had God said, and you, 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 you switch yourself off from that, and you're unable to encounter the Messiah teaching from the mount. Oh my God, help us so that we can see. So go with me to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31, the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 31. Exodus 31, I'm going to pick it up uh, uh, in verse 18. Exodus 31, verse 18. When he had finished speaking with him upon Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of God, uh, sorry, tablets of stone written by the finger of Elohim. Notice, written by the finger of Elohim. Then come down with, with, with me to do, do the, uh, Exodus 32, verse 15. Exodus 32, verse, sorry, I was in uh, 31, verse 18, and now I'm in Exodus 32, verse 15 to 16. Watch this. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides. Notice they were written on both sides. They were written on one side and the other. Verse 16, the tablets were Elohim's work. And the writing was Elohim's writing, engraved on the tablets, engraved on the tablets. I want us to, to consider this because there's a midrash that says these tablets were uh, 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 in a, um, a, a mineral called lapis lazuli. It, it's brilliant to look at. It's, it's a deep penetrating blue. And, and when you look at it, you begin to see uh, uh, inner dimension of it. So just, just consider that, what God is saying. And, and there's a midrash I would like to just share with us. The, the, our sages teach us this. It says, and the tablets are the work of God, and the writing is God's writing engraved on the tablets. That's what we just read. And then they add, read not engraved, harut. Read not engraved, harut, C-H-A-R-U-T. But liberty, herut. C-H-E-I-R-U-T. Let me explain that again. Read not engrave, which means, which in Hebrew is harut. C-H-A-R-U-T. In Hebrew, that means engrave. But the sages are teaching us, read it rather as herut. C-H-E-I-R-U-T. For there is no free individual except for he or she who occupies himself or herself with the study of Torah. And whoever occupies himself with the study of Torah is elevated as it states. From Matna to Nahil and from Nahil to Bahamut, the heights. What they're saying is this. In the Hebrew, the vowels give you a different meaning. If you place the vowels differently, you could read engraved. If you put different vowels, same consonant, you put different vowels, it comes liberty. So what they're saying is that the Torah really is freedom on the tablets. Now, that's a powerful concept to grasp. The Torah is freedom on the tablets. Why? Because to disobey Torah is slavery. But David said, I will walk in liberty because I keep the, tab because I keep the Torah. So if I walk in the, what is written on the Torah, then I become free. Egypt was in bondage. God brought them out of bondage and gave them the Torah. You think God is going to uh, uh, rid them from one bondage to bring them into another oppressive bondage? No, it has to be that God is freeing and giving Israel the inner Torah, a liberty, a dimension that would free us. And that's what God is saying to us. There's a big difference, brethren, between, between, be, between uh, 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 the letter a hearer of the letter and a doer of the Torah by the Spirit. Can I say that again? There's a big difference between a hearer of the letter and a doer of the, uh, of the letter by the Spirit. And that's what God is saying. The Torah could give you liberty if you allow the Torah giver to live through you and bring you out of bondage. So, disobeying God is bondage. Obeying God by the Spirit is liberty. And the devil doesn't want you to get this, so he tells you obeying the Torah is bondage. But living by the Spirit is freedom because you don't understand that the Torah is spiritual. Go with me to Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. The book of Leviticus chapter 26. Look at this. 
Leviticus chapter 26, and we're going to pick it up uh, in, in verse 1 to 13, speaks about blessings for obedience. And then uh, 14 to the rest of the chapter 46 speaks about curses for disobedience. Read Leviticus 26. God says, if you obey, blessings. If you disobey, then curses. All right? But I want you to see, curses are really blessings in disguise. As we go on from there, I want to submit that to you. Curses are really blessings in disguise because it is God getting into our space and time and telling us, Consider why this is happening to you. It's because you have turned aside from my commandment and you're now in bondage to yourself. And he's pointing out to you where you need to turn so that you can come back and inherit the blessing. So rather than think about curses, is God is condemning you and God is punishing you. Yes, there's an aspect where he's disciplining you, but he wants you to see a curse is a blessing in disguise. Because when you're able to recognize, oh my God, this is where I'm strained. I have the blessing of being able to turn back because now I see clearly where I am straight. And if you can't see, then God will allow others to let you know. And if you're not seeing it, then God will, will, will bring the Spirit to show you. All right? Because that's what he's doing, right? So look with me to, uh, um, to verse 21 of the same chapter. Verse uh, Leviticus 26, verse 21. And if then you act with hostility against me, this is God telling Israel, if you act with hostility against me, or if you are contrary to me, or if you act in rebellion and in stubbornness towards me, and, and are unwilling to obey me. So notice, we are acting in hostility, contrary, and we are not willing to obey him. And that is bondage. That is bondage. God said, I will increase the plague on you seven times according to your sins. So I'm going to put the pressure on so that you can let you know that you are unwilling to obey me in the aspect that I'm trying to point out to you. I'm going to increase it and let you, let, let you know, all right? So verse 23, look at the same, same chapter, verse 23. And if by these things you are not turned to me, notice he wants to turn us back, to Shuva, but act with hostility against me. We are acting in hostility against him. Then I will act with hostility against you. And I, even I, God, in a Torah, will strike you seven times for your sins. Thank you for sharing Kingdom Treasures, the enriching and equipping teaching ministry of Rav Angus Marichal. For more Hebraic insight, please visit our YouTube channel at Rav Angus Marichal or Facebook at Shekinah Restoration Messianic Fellowship. Message us at srmf.tt at gmail.com. May you continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Master, Rabbi, and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. The blessing of Adonai be upon you. We bless you in the name of Adonai. Grace and Shalom Shalom. Mm -hmm.